So, uh, hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, reinventing uh, enterprise and government compute. So, Utopia is actually a new technical acronym. It stands for Unstoppable Tamper-Proof Open Platform for Independent Autonomy. And it's a software technology for creating serverless clouds. So, these are private clouds that the owner controls. Um, they can be run over big tech clouds for convenience, or they can be run over home country hardware where sovereignty is important. And you can build on these clouds, um, and there's also an app store so you can uh, install you know, applications directly from that. So these serverless clouds uh, have game-changing ad advantages. Uh, the first one is that when you build on these clouds, your applications are safe uh, without firewalls and anti-malware, which is a big step forward in, in this um, time of cybercrime. Uh, when you build, your IT personnel are vastly more productive because it's a serverless model. Your software systems cannot crash. And you build without vendor lock-in, which is a big issue for a lot of uh, corporations and governments. So you might be wondering uh, where this came from. Uh, Utopia is actually not a new technology. It's, it's the product of more than a 1,000 person years of R&D effort. Um, Already, it's a spin out from the Internet Computer Project. It's been uh, developed over almost 10 years and it's uh, proven in, in, in production and battle hardened. So, uh, Utopia addresses the uh, biggest challenges in, in IT today, and the two we'll focus on today are cybercrime and IT personnel. So, next year, 2025, the global cost of cybercrime will pass $10 trillion, um, something like 30% of the GDP of the United States. It's an absolutely extraordinarily costly thing. And it's causing uh, you know, growing societal, economic, um, and national interest harm. Meanwhile, uh, we spend about $2 trillion a year on IT personnel. So the productivity of our IT personnel is, is also very important. So. Uh, this is one way of understanding uh, Utopia. Our future cloud platforms uh, need, need resilience uh, against data center failure. So e even big tech clouds glitch and go down because there's a problem with the um, un underlying data centers. And for example, AWS went down a couple of years ago, and the, the New York subway stopped working, along with a, a bunch of other stuff. But there are also um, uh, other new and growing risks, um, cyber attacks, state sabotage, um, I'm sure you've all been following current events, and things like terrorism. So we can do much better than this, and uh, I want you to imagine a new era of resilience where the cloud is unstoppable and tamper-proof, and hosted applications are also unstoppable and tamper-proof. And this is something we can do today with Utopia technology. So uh, Utopia takes a different approach, and it creates what, what's known as Byzantine fault-tolerant serverless clouds using mathematical replication. So it's mathematically copying compute and data across several data centers, uh, with the result that these clouds are not vulnerable to um, the failure of a subset of the data centers involved. And even better than that, these clouds are also not vulnerable to malicious insiders um, who are compromising a subset of the data centers involved. Now, it turns out that this approach also solves for ransomware, which is probably the, one of the most disruptive 
uh, cyber attacks around at the moment. Uh, you probably heard that um, London hospitals are recently cancelling surgeries. I think they cancelled like 800 surgeries because of a ransomware attack. It solves for ransomware, uh, penetration, and data exfiltration, which is when you know, a cyber attacker um, steals sensitive data. And so the approach that Utopia takes to cybersecurity um, makes cybersecurity systems unnecessary within the field of cloud and the applications that you're running on it. If, if you're trying to get a handle on, on how this works, perhaps the simplest way of explaining it is that the entire cloud runs inside of a virtual execution environment, which is a bit like the virtual machine that JavaScript in your web browser runs within. And you know, the, the JavaScript can't escape the web browser, and code escape within this cloud is impossible. And then this virtual execution environment is run within a mathematical network protocol. So um, you can create uh, private serverless clouds over big tech's cloud services for convenience if you want. Um, in addition to them being uh, tamper-proof and unstoppable, uh, an another advantage is that you escape vendor lock-in. So when you run a Utopia cloud over big tech cloud services, you get that resilience, um, but you're not locked in. You can add and remove the underlying compute nodes that create the cloud without interrupting the cloud or the applications that it hosts. You can also create uh, serverless sovereign clouds uh, using home country hardware. And this means that you don't need to surrender your data to a big tech cloud service and the jurisdiction of that big tech cloud service. And this is something that's increasingly important for governments around the world. They're mandating that data is kept within the country and private data centers, but you know, uh, rolling your own cloud is not a good idea. This is complex technology. Um, you can also create mobile, local area, uh, secure, unstoppable cloud platforms. And this means you can do things like run uh, sophisticated IT applications within field environments where there may not even be an internet connection. In this case, you know, the, the, the nodes, the compute nodes would be mobile devices, something like a mobile phone, and you know, the connect in a sort of local area network. Um, uh, in developing markets, some, sometimes you know, the terrestrial links between data centers aren't that reliable, aren't that good. Um, but you can bootstrap these kind of serverless cl clouds in, in developing markets um, with the help of Starlink. And I think this is going to be another game changer for um, IT in those markets. So um, you can obviously build on these serverless clouds, but there's also an app store with uh, pre-made services. And these are actually coming from the Web3 space, but have been repurposed for enterprise and government environments. So um, three I'll mention, um, Tope is a new um, project, but you know, the app store's already growing. Uh, Passkey-based identity, um, secure file sharing, that's a big one. Like, how do you store your files? How do you make sure that only the right people can access them? And, and messaging. Like, a lot of governments and uh, many corporations would like to use Slack for productivity purposes, but they want to keep the, the data under their own control, ideally local. Um, this gives you an instant solution to that need. Um, but you can, you can build and host uh, almost anything, uh, any, any online system or service. You can imagine uh, you can run AI models on, on on Utopias. Um, at the moment, you can't quite run a large language model like Llama 3 or, or Mistral, but um, that's going to change in the next few weeks. And uh, you can also host, securely host digital assets on Utopias and process them like data. So you can um, write code that runs on a Utopia that interacts with external blockchains and custodies the assets on those blockchains, calls their smart contracts, and so on. And uh, uses something called chain key uh, technology, even if somebody gains access to some of the hardware that's being used to create the utopia, they still can't steal the assets. So you know, the need to manage uh, digital assets is, is, is going to be is, is growing, and, and just, just like the need to run 
AI that's you know, secure and resilient, uh, because AI is going to have access to all of our most sensitive data. So it's not just about you know, what the AI can do. It's also about, can you protect the data that the AI is, is, is using? Because AI is going to be a honeypot for hackers. And can, you re can you really allow yourself to become dependent on this AI? Because um, you know, obviously, traditional IT infrastructure goes down, isn't very resilient. But you can solve that by running your AI model on a Utopia serverless cloud. Um, there's a lot of changes, uh, so it begins to touch on productivity. So traditionally, you know, scaling uh, applications is, is an onerous task. I mean, I've been uh, in tech now for a long time, um, coding like more than 40 years and so on. And you know, generally, when you're working with a current IT stack, scaling is a pain. Uh, you know, you're redesigning, rewriting, um, installing new components, reconfiguring, redeploying. and um, Utopia <clears throat> provides you with a different way of addressing scaling of applications. You basically scale the uh, Utopia cloud itself, which of course involves uh, you know, highly standardized and friction-free automated processes. Um, a kind of example um, of, of, of why you know, it, it boosts productivity so much, uh, with Utopia, um, IT focuses on, on, on what, um, not, not how. So on Utopia, your applications consist only of the user experience, you know, what you see in your web browser, pure business logic, and, and data. And so if you compare, if you've got an application on the current IT stack that's, say, 10,000 lines of code and configuration, um, on, on Utopia, typically, that will be substantially less than 2,000 lines of code. So that directly drives productivity, 5x you know, five, five productivity to build something. But also, when you build on Utopia, um, you, you, don't, you, you build without a web server, without an application server, without a database, without a file system, without caching servers, without cybersecurity systems. So everything is just within this secure, unstoppable um, environment. And basically means the systems admin can, can be almost negligible compared to the maintenance and administration of a system built on current IT. So the last thing I'll touch on is that uh, Utopia and the environment that it provides um, for, for building is optimized for 100% prompt-based uh, application development using generative AI. So if you follow me, uh, it'll be a demo in a few weeks where you'll see somebody using a very simple interface to interact with AI to build uh, an enterprise system that stores, manages, searches, updates, and so on data with a nice user experience. Um, creating, creating that enterprise application uh, just using prompt-based engineering. What's very, very cool uh, about the way Utopia works is that the same uh, generative AI can update the running application. So you'll be able to interact with the AI, create your enterprise system, uh, put some data into it, play around with it, have some meetings, decide what needs to change. And then you'll be able to update that running application with the data inside. Um, and, and quite literally, you'll be able to interact with the AI to update the application and refresh the link in your web browser and, hey presto, your enterprise or government application has been updated, um, which of course is a big revolution. And you know, um, I think in the coming years, you're gonna see some big changes. You know, we're all used to using uh, standardized services on big tech clouds and things like that because we can't, can't develop them ourselves. Um, to begin with, this technology will be used to uh, you know, meet ad hoc needs and develop simple information systems. But as it continues to mature, people are going to be developing you know, very sophisticated uh, enterprise and government applications that do exactly, precisely what they want, that they can, con they can update just by interacting with an AI. And they're going to run this on you know, private, sovereign, serverless clouds where they maintain um, 
control of, of the data. And um, I put this in, 25x productivity, but it's probably even more than that. Uh, that's the revolution coming, and, and Utopia is designed uh, specifically to, to support that. I mean, if you want an intuition why that's possible, of course, in the serverless cloud environment, everything in the entire application end-to-end -end is just code. There's no like components like web servers and databases you have to install and configure. But yeah, this is, this is um, going to be just as revolutionary as having systems that you know, can't be hacked and, and never go down. Um, OK, thank you. Uh, you can follow me on X. I'm increasingly talking about Utopia. Um, there's not much on utopia.com, but monitor it. There's a, access to a slightly ex extended version of this deck. Thanks. <laughs>